Hi guys, me again. I'm a quest for a uh, well, maybe a Nobel Prize. I don't know. My quest to uh, decipher the entire universe on my own. Uh, started out from scratch. Didn't use Einstein or Newton in the beginning, of course, because they all uh, got us bogged in. So these two I've shown before. You got your hydrogen molecule. You got your helium electrons sticking out they're really part of the molecule they're not so orbiting it they're part of it um four nucleons to q-tips representing those two and four nucleons so that big thing is actually that thing they're the same i'm talking about electron shields now and you can see two valence that's all we start off with two valence that's what mainstream science starts off with, and then it uh, suddenly skips to another isotope. Let me show you. I got all kinds of isotopes compressed in a black hole or the sun or a big planet. They fuse together those into those uh, complete molecules or isotopes, if you will. This one's a two times three and one in the middle makes seven and when it comes out of the sun out of the pressure cooker it folds open like this and then separate nucleons stick to it like this and this one is a bigger one it has three in the middle six outside one in the middle eight outside and this is the biggest one and that's the most interesting one as you will see later on in this video well so these isotopes can grow because these buggers are also uh, adjacent in the neighborhood flying around three part comes out of this one you got your four part comes out of this one two this one and of course your separate nucleons one q-tip represents one of these little gravity motors well and this one of course is your proton with one sticking out a little bit so these are flying around those are flying around and yo stick to those building them up bigger and bigger and bigger there you go again, creating the electron shields. So that's how an atom grows. So I just started out with a few, and this is the first one. It gave me eight, which I liked. You know, uh, science just uh, jumps from one isotope to another. That's what, what everyday science does. Mainstream science doesn't stick to one. Uh, isotope. So it jumps to another and another and another. The two me represents those two, but it's in the middle. It's actually one nuclear, and it doesn't even turn. It doesn't even spin. It's only there to hold them together. But it does a very bad job. It does a bad job. Here's 16 max, and of course it should be 18, but this one is not the isotope which has 18, this is another one, and you can see this one is a very weak one, it will break up in two and uh, well, that's what happens in nature too this one is more sturdy um, I flag those things down, and flagging means uh, the ones with a bit of blue flag or another piece of tape this, which mean, this means it's a neutron, it stays a neutron. Nature wants to make, uh, wants to change neutrons into protons. And uh, it's a very, uh, it's, it's a very, very off balance, it's very uh, precise. And um, Pauli says, you can't have three spinning in the same direction because you're going to get clockwise, anti-clockwise, clockwise, and, and then it will all, uh, there are cogs, you know, those things turn around like cogs. So, damn, I'm so fucking nervous always. <laughs> I'll try to talk slowly, all right? Now, so, um, 
isotopes, different rows of isotopes, building them out, adding those tripods and four pods and loose nucleons, just adding and building those elements. Well, we got your 14, 16, this is at end as well. This one is too weak, this one is six, max isn't wrong, it should be eight, 14, 16. No, this is not the one we're looking for. Now we're looking for this one, and there we got an eight. That's good. This one I haven't figured out yet, it's a bit complicated. It's iron actually, and uh, it's a bit complicated, this one. So I haven't uh, looked into it too much. This one is eight, easy one, easy shell. Electron shield, easy, eight. But way too little, of course, because it should be 32. And this one, I haven't finished yet. But now, the biggest one is the most interesting one, of course. It has eight on the outside, three on the inside. It folds open like this. You see nucleon sticking to it. You see, this one is in action. Turn around, one sticks to it. It sticks on, uh, on one side this side it sticks and then of course within a short time it will stick to this one and this time too because the radius because the length of the nucleon it will stick to that or the other side and in the end you will end up with this thing that's a uh, real beauty then we're gonna determine the electron shields of course and uh, Flag down the center four, uh, leaving eight. So, and the thing is, um, this one is off on our next shield, but you got eight in the second shield, as shown. Nature wants to spin as many nucleons uh, as possible, and nature wants to turn as many neutrons into protons as possible. So. This is the maximum you can get by flagging the four down. You get eight valence. Next step, 18 valence. Same thing, you get one on the outside, another one. Those are fixed. They don't spin, but it doesn't matter in nature. There are different ways to get valence. You don't have to spin to get valence. You get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on that side, eight on the other side. And two makes 18 valence. This is a very interesting row. Comes a long way. This one, flag down, gives you a 32 valence. Next core, again, a next shield, even more complicated. Fifth shield, giving you 50 valence after flagging. The ones down who cannot turn because of poly. So this one looks very promising. 32, 50, you get them all. 2, 8, 6, 18, 32, 50. This 72. Again, a bit more complicated. Again, uh, a bit bigger. Every Q-tip representing one of those little engines over there. So, pretty complicated thing in Adam. And this is my last edition. And it should be the 98, but I, I only get too much or too little. Maybe 96. I just cannot figure this one out, so I need your help with this one. And I know it's a big question, but if you, you have a computer, if you're good with, with, with graphics, if you can turn this model into a, a digital model, it should be far easier to figure out which ones can turn and which one cannot. So I've looked at this from all sides, but I couldn't get the 98 valence. That's sad, 98 protons, I couldn't get them. Well, it might as well be that if I finish this one, that the 98 is actually in that row. It can be, because we can skip rows, science skips rows, so, so uh, why shouldn't I? They skip rows from, from two valence to over here to eight, to here, over here to 18, to, to, to 32. So for all I know, the 98 can be in that row, in this row, instead of this row. So. My question to you guys, if you ever have a lot of time with you on your hands and you want to help me out or you want to help science out, uh, get some Q-tips, create Adam course, and um, 
I tried to figure out where the 98 thalons is. Thank you very much. Bye.